everyone. Uh, my name is Christy and I own a store in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada called Next Time Around and uh, we are a fusion retailer. We've been carrying fusion since day one when it was first launched and we play with the products and, and try out new things and we've discovered a great tip that we are very excited to share with you that you are going to absolutely love. Uh, this is uh, probably my favorite tip so far and it shows you how you can get this super smooth and I mean there are no wrinkles or air bubbles whatsoever when you apply either tissue paper like we did here or whether you're using scrapbook paper, you can use fabric, you can use gift wrapping paper that's really thin that you get from the dollar store, you know the kind that rips real easy. Well, uh, all of these and napkins, this will all work with this tip and you can actually really enhance your furniture pieces by applying uh, whether it is any of these paper or napkin pieces to the side of a piece of furniture. So maybe we'll demonstrate or show you a piece that uh, I actually did paint myself. One of our local artisans did using this tip. And how great is this dresser? Uh, this is a little Volkswagen dresser. And uh, what our local artisan did is she used this tip, which we're going to tell you in a second, to apply this tissue paper that you'll see right here. Okay, this is just super thin tissue paper to the front and to the side of this to give this an authentic uh, Volkswagen from the 60s sort of feel with all the flowers and everything. And there are literally no wrinkles, no air bubbles, anything like that. And this tip is so easy, you're going to love it. Because a lot of times we try to apply tissue paper or paper using Mod Podge and you put the Mod Podge on, you apply the tissue paper or your fabric or whatever while it's wet and then you're trying to iron out or flatten out the wrinkles and because the tissue paper or the paper or the napkins are so thin it easily tears and rips which we try to work over and around by adding more layers on top but this tip is something you can do without having to worry about that. So we're gonna get right to that. I'm gonna sneak back in and around here. So what we are going to use is one of our fusion products called Ultra Grip. So we carry this product and all of your local retailers will carry this product as well and you are going to love this. It is so easy. Uh, it's created so that you can make the hard to paint pieces possible to paint. So it's meant to go on uh, as a base coat on, p on pl things like plastic and glass and metal, a uh, laminate, your Ikea type furniture, things that normally you wouldn't paint. This makes the impossible possible. However, we've learned a new use for that. And that is if we put a coat of this ultra grip on our piece. So whether we were doing it on the side of a dresser, on a drawer front, or as we did in some of our samples, where did my sample go? or here uh, inside of a drawer. A lot of times you want to line drawers uh, with paper to just give it that finished look and you want to make the drawers nice and clean. You can do this inside drawers as well. So I've just squeezed some of the Ultra Grip into just a little plate here and I'm using one of these very inexpensive sponge brushes. And what I'm going to do is literally just brush on a coat of this. So you can go, there's, you don't, there's, this doesn't tack up and get really sticky really fast like Mod Podge does. So that's another benefit is it's easier to work with and you don't need a thick coat. You just need to be able to brush this on and try to get your entire piece evenly coated. Okay, so that's probably the most important thing is to get an even coat. So this goes on white, but dries clear. Of course, you can't see it on this practice board very much because it's almost the same color but I'm just gonna quickly apply a coat of this. Um, you could probably use a roller as well. Um, I don't think how you get it on is probably less as important as the fact that you just get a nice even coat. Um, now, we do recommend two coats of this. So we find two thin coats works better than one thick coat, just because you don't wanna see a lot of brush strokes, but, uh, you're putting something on top of it, so even those brush strokes aren't as important. So this is pretty quick. Uh, you can see that that didn't take me very long. 
to put a layer. Now, if I wanted to do my whole edges, obviously I would do that at the same time. Uh, for the purpose of this video, uh, I'm not going to do that. So you can see at the end, I just kind of went back and forth. I've got now an even coat on that and I'm going to let it dry. So I'm not going to lay my tissue paper or my paper or my fabric or any of those right on now when it's wet because that's when it wrinkles. And then say you wanted to layer some of your tissue flowers together. So we know those cabbage flowers layered looks really pretty and really trendy right now. Um, you may want to move them all around. So don't do it when it's wet. Let it dry. Okay. It doesn't take long to dry. I'd say 20 minutes to a half hour, but it doesn't matter if you did this and let it dry for two days. Just let it dry. Okay. And then do a second coat, by the way. So do two uh, coats of the Ultra Grip on this, letting it dry in between. So again, 20, 30 minutes from now, you can do a second coat in an hour. You can move on to this next step. So we've prepped a board for you. So this is what this looks like. This is dry. Okay, and now I'm just using these boards as a sample for you for the purpose of this video. Again, this could be a drawer front. This could be a inside of a drawer, anything that's a flat surface. That's where this works best as a flat surface. So now I'm just gonna lay that back down and let's just use this tissue paper because that's what we were using before. So this is literally super fine tissue paper, nothing special about it. And what we do, is I'm just gonna lay that over top here. And I don't really care about the edges. I, I'm gonna let it hang over the edge. Uh, if I was doing it inside of a drawer, I would cut that so that it was just a little bit bigger than the drawer, okay? And then I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper. So this is not wax paper because you don't want any wax on this. This is parchment paper, readily available even at the grocery store. And I'm gonna lay that on top of this. So again, this is repositionable. So if I don't feel like I have it right or however I want to position it, I can move it because it's not sticky. So then I lay my parchment paper on top and here's what you do. You take an iron, okay, and you have it no steam and you have it set to the cotton setting. So that's kind of like a medium heat sort of thing so you don't want it too hot. And what I'm going to do is just reactivate that ultra grip, turning it back into glue and I am ironing on my thin uh, tissue paper. In this case, I'm using the tissue paper. Again, you can do this with a napkin. So uh, while I'm doing this for a second, uh, what I did is uh, on this board that we did as a sample board here, I actually did a napkin and then I also did a piece of uh, very inexpensive gift wrapping that again, I got at the dollar store. So this stuff is really thin. It's the kind of wrapping paper that when you get close to the corners, it actually pokes a hole through it. So if you want to do this with a napkin, a lot of times you can get all these different colored napkins. I mean, I just went to Ikea because they have some really cute patterns and stuff. Like, you know, how pretty is this, right? So you'll take your napkin and a lot of times napkins have multiple plies to them. In this case, this is a three ply napkin. And just for the sake of the video, I started tearing it apart. You want to get rid of those other two plies. So there's, see how there's three plies to this to make this work best. You'll definitely want to get down to just one single ply. But again, when you're doing this tip, if you were to try to lay this out on wet Mod Podge or something, I find that it just gets really wrinkly and you can't reposition it at all. So we're just going to tear this apart. So this is again, not very difficult to do. Maybe down at the very end it is. Okay, you get rid of or keep this later on. Okay, so you would just literally do the same thing. You would put this on your dry ultra grip. You would lay your wax paper over top and you would iron that on. Again, you will not get any wrinkles or anything like that in this. It will give you a super smooth, uh, drawer liner or again decorative finishes on the outside uh, of flat surfaces because we're ironing it This works obviously on flat surfaces. So I'm just showing you with the napkin, but I will continue with uh, the rest of this board It doesn't take long to heat up so uh, You can just go over it a few times you can kind of take the iron fairly slow back and forth all you're trying to do is reactivate that ultra grip and, uh, and this actually, because you're reactivating it, it just soaks right into the tissue paper and it really sticks well. I wish through the camera you could come and touch this and see how there's no wrinkles. 
or air bubbles. So again, some of those things that happen if you were trying to attach this uh, using other products besides Fusion's Ultra Grip. But let me tell you, this Ultra Grip is so multi-purpose now. Um, and we are so excited to share, you know, share this video with you so that you can go grab yourself a bottle and uh, just start uh, decoupaging really is kind of what this is. Uh, lots of different pieces that way. So this again didn't take very long. I'll just set that back down. You don't need an ironing board or anything. I mean, depending on what you're ironing. So again, uh, I was able to put the tissue paper inside this and get the iron inside the drawer. So just make sure that your iron fits inside whatever you're doing. But again, on the outside of this dresser, you can just flip it onto the side, lay your tissue paper down and iron it and you're good to go. Okay, so again, you can wrap it around, do different things. And that's what that looks like. So that is like completely attached to that. Okay, now uh, what we can do, this is another tip that you may have seen already before, and I guess I could do it with this one. I'm just gonna use the smaller one that I trimmed. What we did here is the same thing. Now we painted this board in Tuscan orange first because this tissue paper actually has some orange details. So we thought the Tuscan orange looked really great. So I just trimmed it down for the purpose of this video, but I left that there. Cause now what you do is you take a sanding sponge and going away from the tissue paper, you just rub that and you are literally just getting the perfect little line of having that now removed. Okay, so I just go around the edge, again, working away from the tissue, because I don't want to pull that back up where I've had that glued down. But how easy is this? And this is probably about a 220 grit sanding block. Okay, and I can do that all around all four edges. So imagine again that this is a drawer front. So you've got the edges of your drawer front already painted. You can also paint the edges after, so it doesn't mean you have to do it right up one. So if you've got a piece already started, it's not too late to be able to do this. So see how I, how quickly and how easily I get a super smooth finish just like that. And again, there are no air bubbles in this is tissue paper, so I can't stress that enough. You can find lots of beautiful tissue paper. Sometimes they're at specialty stores, uh, maybe Hallmark and Carlton cards and things like that. Or if you have a place that specializes just in uh, different types of paper, you would, the sky's the limit on this. But again, it can be fabric too. We actually, again, I talk about our dollar store because as artisans, you know, when we want to create works of art that we want to sell to the public, we want to be as savvy as we can on buying our materials and not have to spend a lot of money. Well, this is a role that I got, it's a dollar store, but it's three dollar store. <laughs> so this is a roll of fabric, okay? And we did this on a piece of one of these sample boards. I did the exact same technique. Okay, so I put two thin coats of the Fusion Ultra Grip, let it dry in between, and it's, it was all dry, and then I literally just put on my fabric, I put the parchment paper in between, because again, I don't want that glue when we're reactivating it to gum up my iron. So that's the reason for the parchment paper, is so that the glue doesn't get all over that. And then that was done, and right afterwards, I did the same thing, even with the fabric. I took this sanding block and sanded the edges down. Okay, you could do, you could flip it over and maybe run a really sharp exacto knife or something around the edges, but I found that it was easiest if I just used the sanding block the same way I did with the tissue paper, even with fabric, okay? So you can do it with fabric as well. And now some of you are going to be asking, okay, well you've done this, but how do you seal it? How do you make it so that uh, it's protected if somebody decides they want to wash this or you is it a heavy heavily trafficked area well that's when our product our fusion tough coat comes in handy so i was kind of concerned about whether uh, when i applied the fusion tough coat what would happen would it uh, lift the paper back up would it bubble will it wrinkle and uh, so some of the areas you don't necessarily have to do that with to protect it especially inside drawers I don't think I would really bother when I'm doing fabric or paper because again we have, most people are putting clothes or something in there but if you are doing it on a piece of furniture that you definitely want to protect the fusion tough coat is your product for that um, when you have tough coat um, it is a satin finish so you don't want to shake it so much that you get a whole bunch of air bubbles in there, but you definitely want to kind of gently rock it or mix it up a little bit. 
the, the matting agent in the Fusion Tough Coat tends to sit to the bottom. So you don't want to just open, you know, take a fresh bottle that's been sitting still for a while, pour it on because you'll get a really glossy finish. And time you get to the bottom, it will be a really dull, flat finish. So definitely just, you just kind of shake it, rock it a little bit. But again, you're not trying to agitate it to the point where you put a whole bunch of air bubbles in it, okay? So I already just poured some of that into a little cup. And, uh, and so this is the piece that we did first in Tuscan Orange. So what we do now, again, you can use a sponge, you can use one of these little rollers. Again, a lot of times, depends on the size of your piece, uh, depends on what type of uh, sponge. You can use a bigger sponge or a little sponge like this. I don't think it matters that much. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply the tough coat. But Jackie, I'm gonna have you come closer because one of the things that we discovered when we did this, especially with uh, a napkin and a little bit with this too, is the areas that were white actually disappear. And so now you're starting to see a little bit of that Tuscan orange color come through a little bit. So now I'm protecting this. Now remember I was talking about will it lift, will it wrinkle? It does. It does lift and wrinkle a bit, but don't worry because what you'll do is you'll let this dry and you will do the ironing thing again. So again, I will finish this with the tough coat, but then when this is dry, I'm gonna take my parchment paper, my iron again on the cotton setting, and I am going to iron that. So any of those wrinkles or anything that came from applying the tough coat will be ironed out. And you really have kind of like really sandwiched that in there and you'll get a super smooth finish that's now protected and will last for many, many years. So uh, again, it's, it's such an easy thing and we were so excited to share it with you. We hope that this video inspires you to go and have, go to your dollar store, go to a paper store, uh, look in your you know stash of papers you have somewhere and see what you can do to enhance uh, pieces of furniture, drawers. You can use these, uh, like one of, the, one of the ladies that works here, she suggested that you know, if I take something like this and I hang a little clip on it, I can actually have like a little piece of paper hanging there and this could now be a to-do board or I can use this as the background and stencil something over top of it. Uh, it you know, there's so many things, you can hang hooks on it. So there's lots of different things that you can do when you have just a plain board. It's a good thing to practice on, but don't, don't be shy, definitely practice. And, uh, and again, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.